Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy Hour. Hour. That was really good. I good clink there. Pretty great ding. Okay. Here we are, Rachel. First episode. I'm so pumped about this. This has this been a while. This was just a glimmer in our eyes months ago. And we thought, let's just put some microphones up and chat about what we love to chat about. And now it's a real boy. Look at that. It's a what? I'm a real boy. I didn't want to have to do the voice, but oh you gosh. got me there, Rachel. Freaking excited We're about We're so this. glad you all are here listening in. This is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts, armed with a drink in hand, talk about money, pop culture, and all the stuff you wish your friends would talk about. So we're going to be those friends for you today. We are your be friends. Be the friends you wish you had. <sighs> That's great, George. That's actually a good quote. We should tweet that. There you go. Okay, so in today's episode, we're going to talk about seven trends that made us broke. This is real. But first, let's share what they can expect uh, to start every episode, which is a drink. That's right. So we're going to talk until we finish our cocktail, or at least one of us finishes. In this episode, what drink are we sipping on, George? Well, uh, this is a basil gimlet. Mm -hmm. This is a tried and true, timeless classic and it hits the spot. I love a gimlet, and then you add basil to it, and it, it's a whole new drink. The herbaceousness, if that's, that's right. a word, <laughs> just really hits in this one. So wait until the end of the episode. We're going to give you our rating, the recipe, break down the cost, all of that good stuff. And for those of you that don't know who we are, you just found us on some algorithm from big tech, and you now you are here, or a friend maybe recommended you. Uh, George is an amazing podcast host on other podcasts where he talks about kind of the dark side of money, and he loves stand-up comedy. That is true. True statement. And Rachel, you've been helping people with money now for over 15 years. Does that make you feel old? It's got to. A little bit. And you love a good conspiracy theory, which that'll have to be its own episode. A lot I already there said the words pack. big tech, so you know I love oh, conspiracy theory. Listen, enough about us. Let's get to what the people are here for, the trends that made us broke. Yes. Okay, let's dive in. Number one, it hurts my heart a little bit, but Amazon Prime. I'm a primer. Me That's too. That's what they call them. I don't know. Do they have a name? Like Beliebers? I am shocked when people don't have Amazon Prime. Can I say that much? That is true. You know what? It is, I, at an event, I talked about Amazon Prime taking that out of the budget to save some money. And I was, people were throwing tomatoes at me. <laughs> like, it is, people are stage. emotionally attached to Amazon Prime. It's a part of them. So it is a part of Daily Rhythm, though. We use it. I mean, I'm not kidding, George. We probably get a package. If I say every day, do I sound like, do I sound insane? A little bit, but I think a lot of people are relating right now. And I have three kids, too. So it's just like, oh, you need stickers for your project? I don't Amazon. Wanna, I don't want to run the Target. It can even be here in 24 hours. So we're going to just Amazon. We Amazon everything. That's huge. And Amazon has obviously expanded beyond just, you know, free shipping and all their shopping. They've got video content and they yeah. have all kinds of features now. But most people use it for the free shipping. And there's an interesting stat here. Repricer Express Amazon Prime members tend to spend $1,000 or more per oh, year compared man. to non-Prime members who spend about 100 to 500 Which is so, it has to be so Why? true. Because think about it. The convenience, it's all convenience. You can get on your phone and in three taps, you can have whatever you need at your door. Yes. And instead of saying, oh, I have to go make a trip for it. Okay, well, I'll have to wait till tomorrow because I don't have time today. So I'll have to run errands tomorrow. And then by the time you get there, you're probably like, eh, do we really need that? Right? Time always makes you think, okay, yeah. purchases may not be necessary. And truthfully, a lot of the times they do have a great price. I was at yes, Target the other day, and the lady at the register said, hey, I wouldn't buy the Huggies here. Mm -mm. They're cheaper on Amazon. Just Stop go it. ahead and do that. Huggies? Yeah. Diapers? George? Uh, there were natural care baby wipes, if you want to be very specific, is Wait, what she was getting. I thought you were buying... Diapers. No, right? This oh, lady, a lady, my it wasn't me. Gosh, it I was thought another a moment. Woman. I thought, is Whitney pregnant? Gosh, no. I went there. I, I went would not there be making head. an announcement on this podcast well, I thought if you she was. slipped, and I was like, oh my gosh. No. Okay. It was another lady in line. Oh, although, and, oh I thought it was you. No. <laughs> I overheard this conversation. I'm sorry. I overheard gotcha. at Target. That's a whole new segment we could do. And they said, just wait for it. And Amazon the lady Prime. was like, it's cheaper on Amazon. I yeah. went, this is how Target dies. All right. Next trend is. <laughs> Google. Oh, boy. You have a lot of thoughts about Google, Rachel. I know Google, that. man. You don't like them listening to you. They, they do, though. I appreciate it because no one li – my wife doesn't listen to me. <laughs> At least Google cares. They're listening. Okay, and here's what's fascinating. More than 80% of Alphabet's revenue – Alphabet is like the mothership of Google – comes from Google Ads. Mm -hmm. They have your search history, in-app interactions, past purchases, voice command, app data, online profile, your favorite websites. And, of course, they share that info with advertisers, Ugh. which is one of the main ways they make money, through advertising. Isn't YouTube, that crazy, though? Okay, tell me this. 
when your fo- like everyone's like your phone listens to you. Hundred percent. Yeah, I know. Like, isn't that crazy yeah. though? I know that's kind of old news, but Google is in all. Well, they of used that. to be like, no, it's not listening to you. It's based on who's around you in your environment. No, they're listening. They have that microphone, man. Guys, if it's you're scary. like, hey, I'm gonna get off the grid. We should ASAP. get a Michelob Ultras at the golf course later. You will see an ad in your Instagram all over for Michelob Ultra. Basil Tell Gimlet, me. Basil Gimlet, Basil um, Gimlet. And then why does someone have a Basil Gimlet Free recipe money, come up? Free money, massages, <laughs> all the things that we want. Just wish it into an existence. Uh, so that's a big one, which yes. then goes into social platforms. Number three, social platforms. Now, and this I is am everywhere. guilty of this. I am a, I am 1,000% a tap on this link on Instagram to buy the shirt, to buy the makeup, to buy the hair product. I've done it all. Well, it used to be you had to like be watching, you know, TGIF on TV, and then the ad comes on. And then you go, oh, I should go to the mall this weekend and check. Now you don't have to do that. It's just happening to you. I know. The ads show up in your brain. Okay, so this is, okay, so where I don't Google, I'm like, ugh, I'm not mad at, I'm not mad at people showing me a cute sweater. You're I'm not, not mad at relevant ads. Yes. It used to be we were angry that ads weren't relevant. We're like, I don't want to see this. Who I don't was need angry a reverse about that? home mortgage. You? Me, personally, okay, and I millions of I've Americans. Oh, okay. I speak on behalf of the listeners out there who hate seeing ads that have nothing to do with them. Like, I don't have kids. I don't need to see ads for diapers. So I appreciate that ads have gotten smarter. Yeah. And you don't like the fact that they're listening to everything. That is true. That is true. Okay, so here's what's fascinating to me. That now people are more likely to buy a product from an influencer, 37% more likely Versus a celebrity at seven percent. Our world has changed, George. Influencers We're the same have taken age, over. but you go back to like two thousand two. Like you go back to like the days of the olden days, like of, Oregon Trail, of Britney and in sync, like like those days. And you would watch every, or I would every award show, every like celebrities. It's were all like we had. This thing. It was just they were a they were such a big deal. And now not so much. We used to watch music videos. On oh, TV. Pop-up video. TRL, yeah. pop-up, all of it. All of it. Carson Daly. So this is, a, this is a problem. And the way part of this makes us broke is, Rachel, you're, <laughs> you're guilty of this for sure. The swipe up on the influencer. They're I like, know. Well, here's now they're, my It's haul. now links. And then you go to Like to Know It app. And, uh, and then they have discounts because they've partnered with these it's, companies. It's terrible, y'all. But I don't— How many don't, things have you bought from an influencer that you saw on Instagram? Should we count literally what I have on literally right now? Literally her outfit. I'm not All even kidding you. Yep, the sandals. Okay, they're Steve Madden. These Levi jeans was from another. These are two separate. This was just from Loft. No, and then earrings. no earrings. So two out of four major. Um, oh, my rings! I got my ring idea from a. Yeah, I mean, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It's where I find stuff. It's where I get ideas. And this is, I feel like more. But I'm I not, spend. But it, but it does make you spend money. Yeah, and I think women are more uh, susceptible to swiping up on the influencers. Now the guys fall. You know, our friend Dr. John Deloney, uh, one of our Ramsey personalities here, has his own show. He falls for like supplements, protein <laughs> shakes, yeah, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. a very different world. Women more into the clothing, the accessories. You it's know, true. all that stuff. But hey, it'll keep you broke if you it just keep spending the money you don't will. have. All right, next, technology. Oh, I love me some technology. Yeah, yeah, you're I was you're a former more... Apple Store employee. Did this... you know that? I did know Do that. Do I not just look like a guy who would work at the Apple you Store? I just love Apple. Who would be super helpful in getting you a MacBook <laughs> Pro you that's great... right for you? you got... <laughs> Do you want 256 what gigabyte gigs or 128? You... What is a gigabyte? Did you say what gigabyte? Yeah, is that what it is? Yes. Oh, my phone. Great? Well, I don't know. Re- finish your question because I have a dark I just curiosity. Need a, I'm going to just sip and you take this one. All right. Because you just, you know this world more than me. Yes. Ever. So I'm going to sip my gimlet. Fun, sad stat for you. 74% of Americans spend $4,000 a year on conveniences like subscription boxes, food deliveries, ride sharing, all through apps. I don't apps, do that stuff. All through apps. This is huge. Uh, so millennials, they earn less than other generations and they'll let you know that. They're always upset at the other generations. <laughs> The wages, uh, they're most likely to outsource tasks for convenience. 86% use convenience services like home cleaning, lawn care, food delivery. We just don't have, we don't have the energy, Rachel. Okay, this is, this is so interesting because this is a big shift from how I grew up. Like we didn't have someone clean our house. My mom did it. We, dad did the yard work for many Bless years him. before he hired a lawn service. Papa Dave just out there in his Reebok, just I mean, crushing the lawn. Just- just doing the push mower. I love it. Push mower. Uh, Winston grew up doing yard work, all of it. So when we, we got a, we got rid of our lawn mower when we moved two years ago because Winston mowed for ten years of our marriage, 
And then when we moved two years ago, he sold it. Wow. And it was like a, it was like a, not a crisis moment, but it was this like value moment of like, okay, do I want my kids? Can your kids learn work ethic without seeing them, seeing you as the parent fix Ooh. stuff, do, do lawn care, clean the house, all of it. I want to say yes. For I sure. think they can learn that. But that's how we were taught. Like, that's yeah. how we learned to work. And I don't have kids yet, stuff. so I don't have that thing where I'm like, the kids are watching. I like, know. my dogs are watching. They don't care. I've never mowed a lawn in my entire life. Stop it, George. Never. Really? Yes. Here, okay, here's a question, George. I'm almost proud of it now. I want to see if I can just <laughs> go to the grave having never mowed a lawn. Because we've talked about this offline, so I know this about you, that you're just not, like, necessarily a handy guy. That hurt, but fair point. <laughs> You're not quite like, that. I'm more man. like, I'll fix your Wi-Fi. You know what I mean? I'll set up your smart. Your bolts. technology. That's why you took yes, this piece of the podcast. We all have our strengths. But I do, I do love, I do love. But this idea so of like, I'm going to find a YouTube video to fix something, and it's like some guy in his basement. He's like, "Hey guys, I'm Randy. I'm going to show you." And it's just poorly done footage of 18 minutes of this guy showing me but how to do this thing. But it so much money. Winston has fixed our fixed our thing. washer with watching YouTube videos. Winston our is air a superhuman. Well, the guy can do it all. He's a piano should, player. He's should, a handyman. You should YouTube. You should YouTube. Well, anyways, millennials, they were more about saving time than saving money. Yep, Let's just call go. that out. There you go. Agree, disagree in life, but that that is it. Fair point. All Touché. right. Uh, free shipping will also keep you broke because oh it causes you to buy more. 73% of buyers are more likely to make a purchase if free shipping is included. Are you one of the 73%? I am. It, me too. It legitimately pains me to pay for shipping. Mm-hmm. I hate it. I'd rather you build it into the cost and make me feel better. Feel good about it? Yeah. <laughs> like if it's 40 bucks with $10 shipping, just make it 50 bucks in free shipping. And yeah, I'm more likely to buy it. To do it. Isn't that funny? Be and you know what to ruin that is Amazon. Is Amazon Prime back to number one. I know. That's huge. I know. And I really have to be careful with it because if I buy clothes online and it's like just for $35 more, you can have free shipping. But the shipping is $7. And I'm like, no, I will not fall for that scheme. So I, I have true. I have stayed strong in many weak moments, George. I just don't know how they do it. I just got my dog food delivered. It's like a you know nine pound bag of dog food, free shipping, and I'm like, how are they doing this? And it's still cheaper than going down to Petco. There's so, got to be a conspiracy Chewy. theory. Chewy.com, not a sponsor, it. but hey, if you are, hit me up. There you go. All right, next smartphones. Oh boy, and this is just simply the cost of smartphones, which is now like a laptop cost because it is a laptop. They're all over a thousand dollars. It is crazy, though. What you can do on it, though, is insane. And how I, easily you can break it is insane. No, that's true, too. Uh, would you ever go back to a flip phone? Not in a thousand years. Does any part of your soul think, like, all of this is just ruining us? And oh, I absolutely. could go back to— I remember getting the original iPhone, and you could it had Safari, and you could get on the Internet, and it was like the web page was on my phone, and I was like, my mind is blown is right now. This is such a huge deal. I had a Droid. You can't go back. I was a Droid user for a little bit. Did you know that? And it shows. I <laughs> Shows, Rachel. Gosh. That was my first smartphone. Actually, I did the BlackBerry Touch was my first smartphone. The BlackBerry Touch. Did you ever have the Nokia the, like, that had oh, Snake the and all that? Yes. I would I would get a Nokia okay. just to play Snake. That I game I mean, that crushes. was a great game. And I'd go to the kiosk in the mall and yeah. buy like jewel, jewel buttons for it and oh then like a gosh. phone case. It was bedazzled? It was bedazzled. Yes, in high school when that was your and phone. And then you stopped by Claire's and you got your ears pierced. All of it and then Hot Topic. I mean, all of yeah. Oh, gross. I, lo I love them all Well, days. here's the thing with smartphones. There's this thing called planned obsolescence. Have you heard of this? Wow, teach me. Technology makers are making things to break quickly. No, Is that true? Yes. That you is ever like heard the statement, they don't make them like they used to? Mm -hmm. That's true. They don't. Because they're going to have you spend more. They could make this phone invincible if they wanted to. But, but instead, you do one software update, and then your phone is slow as molasses, and they're like, all right, time to get a new phone. It's, it's been a yep, year. Yep, yep. Time to spend another $1,000 $1, and give this phone to my niece as her play. You know, it's just— Have they ever come out and said it? No, they won't admit that. No. I'm sure they've been in, like, court and stuff and had to, like, face a judge and be like, no, we don't do that at all. This is not We're true. We're good people. This is not true. But I still—I'm an Apple fanboy. Through and through. I will so, always have an iPhone. You're going to be loyal. I throw mad shade at Android users. Be better. Life is too short to use an Android. <laughs> that should be Apple's tagline, truly. <laughs> oh my we gosh. just lost half of our listeners. I know. If you're an Android Listen, user, I was you Now, once. if you're doing it, they're always like, well, iPhones are too expensive. I'm like, Android, the nice ones are still like very, very expensive. Yes. All for a worse experience. For a worse user experience. You deserve better. A lot of technology people, though, do Android. New tagline, you work too hard to use an Android. <laughs> All right, last but not least, 24-7 access to anything we want in the world. I love that this is a trend because this really points to the biggest problem with everything. 
We, everything, all of the time, whenever we want it, no matter what, access. Instant gratification. Do you remember, like, going to the library and having to, like, open an encyclopedia to, like, learn yes. about a caterpillar? Yes, we had those at our house. We had encyclopedias at our house. Yeah, to, to look up the word, everything. It's, ru- it's ruined our critical okay. thinking skills. It's that, and I don't have data on this, but also they're saying that our brains— oh, Shoot, I wish I could remember specifically what it was. It's basically like our brains are getting smaller or getting dumber. Speak because, for yourself. Because Rachel. we don't have to— we don't have to memorize stuff. Like if you're going somewhere, you just put it in your Google phone. Google Maps. Yep. Or uh, a phone number. You don't have to memorize phone numbers. Do you remember numbers. printing out MapQuest and having to be like, all right, we're, yes. g- we're print, opening and the then big when Magellan Garmin, map? When Garmin's came out, it was like, what? Game changer. What? Uh, yes, but our brains literally are not functioning the way they did 20, 30 years ago because they don't have to. So there, there is something. That's true. I'm pretty sure my parents still have the old school map, like brochure style that they would fold out if they needed it in case of emergency. Do you know when I think of that? I think of uh, Crossroads, the Britney Spears movie. Did you ever see that? Literally nothing in life could be like, <laughs> that makes me think of Crossroads from Britney Spears. I think that's what it's I called. I do absolutely remember that movie, though. Because I remember the other day, yeah. But that's, yeah, back in the day, though. I was more of a walk to remember kind of guy. Remember that one, Mandy Moore? Oh, that was a great one, that's too. a classic, real sad. Great. I bet they did use maps in that one, too. Well, back to access to anything. Uh, e-commerce. Let's talk about this. Credit cards, most popular method uh, in e-commerce. 53% of all transactions are on a credit card. And it's frictionless. Now it's Apple Pay. And I just have to walk up and hold my phone near it or hold my card. Yep. And there's no emotion attached. It's done. It's dangerous. And with all of this access, it's impulse purchases. Two out of three impulse purchases are done in your bed. That's insane. <gasps> Wait, think say about, that again? Think about it. Two out of three impulse purchases are done in bed. Oh, man. You're in the bed, and it's usually 100%. late at night. hundred you know? percent. A hundred percent. Yes, just that's when I buy good. all my clothes. It just feels good. You're in your safe space. You're cozy. No, like I can do that. And you're like, time I to scroll and tap. Oh man. Okay, you guys. So listen. Moral of the story is not that these things are bad in and of themselves because they are helping us move on with the world and and give us time back. All the things, but you just have to be careful because you will spend money. Sometimes money you don't even have going into debt for it to get this stuff and the impulse like. The impulse buying and all of it, it's just going to be so dangerous and we're guilty to your of money. This. Can we just call that out? We're oh, not yeah. like on our mountaintop being like, you guys are terrible. No. We fall for this all the time. No. I have to really guard against it. You really do. I mean, you want to budget and say, hey, do I have the money? Uh, ask some good questions to yourself, you know, as before you make a purchase. And it really does help because it can subside some of the impulse purchasing. But if you just live purely in your emotions, purely on your phone, you're going to spend lots and lots of money you don't need to. So can I give them that. some quick tips? Uh, yeah, I mean, this, is, this is our podcast. We can do whatever we want. All right. So uh, I've got this framework called Smart Spender. And so this is just questions you ask before you make a purchase, and it'll help you guard against this. I use this personally. S, self-awareness. Is there something I want to buy? Is this based out of my values? If that's a yes, we move on to M, motive. Do I want to buy this for a good reason? Am I buying this to impress my buddy or because of peer pressure or because mom and dad – That's If it's a no, we got to stop and pause and find a way better motive. It's good. Affordability. If we actually answer this correctly, do I have the cash to pay for this in full? America would have no debt. This is huge. Make sure sure it's in the budget. You can afford it in cash. R for research. Most people skip the research. They just see the ad and they swipe up. But you, George? I'm like, is this cheaper elsewhere? I know. you're, You're great at that. And then timing. Is now the time to buy it? Oh, boy, we, we got to get junior soccer gear. Now we can't buy this right now. Is the sale coming up for Labor Day? Let's wait. For sure there's going to be a sale. Let's wait to get a deal. If you walk through that, I think you make better smart spending decisions, and that's what I want everyone to do. Is that what a gimlet does to you, George? That's what a gimlet does to me. It just yeah. really – you said my brain's getting smaller. This gimlet is making my brain enlarge. And that was that was very impressive. Thank smart, you. Smart so – what do you call that? The smart spending? Smart spending framework. Great job, George. I Thank love you. that. I love Appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right, I'm still drinking. Are you? You're uh, closer than I am. I am. I'm, I'm less than halfway done. You're, okay. You're, yeah, you still got some. Well, it's time for our last segment, Rachel. That's you know right. what it is. I love it. Guilty as charged. An so, aggressive term for a very fun segment, <laughs> I will say. So in this segment, our producer, Lindsay, is going to give us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to drink and say why. So, Lindsay. What is it, Lindsay? Hit what us. Is it th- what is it this episode? I'm kind of nervous. Have you ever accidentally or intentionally stolen something? Oh, <gasps> Great question. This is legitimately incriminating. I've only stolen hearts. 
Oh, I'm just kidding. George. I'm just kidding. I'm trying to think of something I legitimately st- like. I wouldn't. I've never like gone into a store and just like grabbed something and I left. Know. Like not to that knew, level. Yes. Have I done things that are ethically like on the line? I've gone to a movie theater and seen two movies and paid for one. Ooh, <gasps> that's a classic. That's did, technically that. stealing. I mean, I technically stole to from the actors in the movie, but we don't mm. care about them. Remember, celebrities don't matter anymore. Just influencers. <laughs> Man, have I legitimately stolen something? Now, unintentionally, when Rachel puts some earrings in her pocket at the store and just walks out, she's like, oh my gosh, how did these earrings get here? I I am unintentional. Never done that. I'm just kidding. It could be like, what if you thought someone paid something, like bought this for you? Like they you thought, and then you walk out my kids and you're like, ooh, that's happened to my kids. That's 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 happened with my kids. You know what? We walked out of a store and we've been driving home. I'm like, where'd y'all get that? And they're like, I don't know, I just grabbed it. I'm like, you can't just take stuff. And I we drove back because I really did feel guilty about it. I'm like, we're not, we didn't pay for this. And they need to learn that. You win the Nobel Peace Prize. It's called stealing. Would you do that, George? No, but here's what has happened. (laughs) No. Like a cashier. They put everything in the bag. They forgot to scan something. Yeah, I and don't then go it's back. in the bag, and then I'm gone, and I'm on the way home. I don't we're go in a back rush. For that. I'm like, I'm not going back. That's user even... error. All I right, agree. they eat the cost of that. That one, my fault. That has for sure happened a few times. Yep. Unless it's something wildly expensive, I'm like, oh my, you know, they're not not scanning an iPhone when you go to the Apple Store. It's not that level. It's something that's You're like a dollar. Obsessed with Apple. That's um, what I've decided. Yeah, like what about episode? at a restaurant if they like didn't put your drink on there oh 100 or whatever I'm not, do you say it are you like oh um, i would excuse say me. it i would I, okay i just because go, that affects their tip like the total that i just tip tip on. them more that's what i do personally if they miss something i'm like hey compliments of the chef all right i'll give them an extra tip very nice oh man <laughs> good. i think the key here is rachel's just a better person than me is what i'm that's finding a good out theme of this podcast that's a great we can, theme. we can keep on that <laughs> Golly. I would feel, I, that would be, yeah, if it was like really obvious. And, I, and, I, and the only reason I say that is if it's at a nice restaurant, I would feel bad and tell them. But if it was at um, Schlotzky's, I don't know, I'm trying to think of what? Sonic. Schlotzky's? <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a random. Rachel's always bringing Rachel, up Schlotzky's. I love Schlotzky's. Why don't you tell the people what this is? Schlotzky's? Who knows what Schlotzky's is? It's just is. like a, it's a sandwich place. place. Fast casual it's a, it's sandwich, a fast place. sandwich place. They're next to McDonald's. But it's I'm just, like, I just, <laughs> why is that so funny? I legit don't think it's national. Shalats- she, the way she said it, like Sh- Schlotzky's. Schlotzky's is national i guarantee it we'll look okay, it up we're after gonna this. Have to fact it is national that. but no one has been there in 19 <laughs> years the fact that that's what was on the top of your mind is the number one original i will say olives. if it's a small business versus like target huge difference okay you know what i mean mr nobel peace prize i'm now just saying like hairs. a giant corporation you're like kind of like yes yeah, take it to the man All like right. amazon sends me something by accident i'm like whatever that's on them yeah but if something was addressed and it was not from your home, oh, though. I mean, yeah, I'm not taking, no. I'm okay, not trying okay. to get it to the, the owner. <laughs> I'm not evil, I'm Rachel. I'm just making sure. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling out. I'm feeling well, out hey, the, uh... If you have your own guilty as charged question you want us to answer, DM us on Instagram, at Rachel Cruz, at George Camel. That'll be fun. We'll include that in the show. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. So, George, who finished? Uh, I am I am more That's finished you. than you are. Rachel wins today. I won. Yep. I what won would you today. rate the drink today? Uh, a basil gimlet. I love a basil gimlet. I love a gimlet. It's like kind of my go-to cocktail at it's restaurants. It's a fun word. Let's be honest. It's great. Um, so I'm going to say a nine. I was going to go nine out of ten. Oh, great, choice. We finally agree on something. Yes. That's good. Unbelievable. And if you want the recipe for this, you can check out the show notes. This one is on the – it's on the pricier side because you've got to get – Fresh squeezed limes. You got to get the basil. So there's an extra ingredients in here, but you're still looking at like, you're looking at like two seventy four, depending on the type of gin that wow, you use. Wow, specific. Three bucks or so. We're gonna go three bucks. If you want to use fancy gin, it'll go up a little bit. You want to use the cheap stuff? Yeah, it might go down a little bit. It's great. So there you go. All right, you guys. So if you want to hear more episodes, make sure to click the subscribe and follow button. Don't forget to follow us on social, and we'll be releasing episodes every. Thursday. George, this was so fun. It was a blast. And if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Okay? Don't yeah, be a jerk on the internet. Yeah, if you don't like it, you don't have to review it. Yeah, don't be a troll. You don't have to, you don't have to put a review on. But this on. was fun, but if you like it, Episode one in the books. In the books. So we'll see you next week on Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour.